Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors. And off we go here at Soldier Field. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. Here are the commanders for their first drive of the game. And they will be let out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. This is what this man was born for, the big spotlight on the national stage like this. Really, his entire career has demonstrated incredible poise no matter what type of situation his team was in. No situation is too big for him, and you can tell in the way that he takes the field. His self-belief is evident, and he gets the job done in his mind each and every time. Throwing to start the drive, Daniels. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. It may be cliche, but it is something that holds up over time, doesn't it? If you're the visitors, you don't want to let the crowd in the game early. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did there. But you said also this defense, they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there, aren't they? They certainly are. They're a proud unit, and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them, and that's why they got after them early. So the completion good for seven there, and they'll be facing a third and 12. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Looking to throw. Daniels. And he can't escape, and down he goes. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. What a great job getting pressure here on the first drive. Three plays and already two sacks. And that pressure has been intense right from the beginning. And I'm telling you, if they don't make an adjustment in play calling and protection, it'll go from intense to relentless. So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. To return is Taylor. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and it'll be a short field for the Bears as they take over first and 10. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp, he sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. Here's Williams throwing on first down. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. Touchdown, Chicago! D.J. Moore, 47 yards. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Santos able to tack on the extra point, And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And Gibson decides against bringing it out. Now Washington going to retake the field for drive number two. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. 
Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. But well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Shotgun handoff to Gibson. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down, Daniels hitting Samuel on the slant. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first and ten, it's Gibson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Once more, Gibson. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at about the Bears' 40-yard line. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and in inches situation. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Third and inches, just turn around, hand it to the big guy, and let him plow forward and pick up a first down. A lot of people think that the offensive line, they may almost take the play off because they got a big guy back there pushing forward. I think it actually works in reverse. I think they block harder because they love seeing that guy get the ball because he doesn't touch it very often. A pretty good-looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Off play action. Daniels. Short throw there, caught by Thomas. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. 
down to the six yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. To throw on second down, Daniels toward the pylon, caught! And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Washington with a football here to begin quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. Back to throw. Daniels looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. Two yards on the touchdown there, and the Commanders are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second and six. They'll run. It's Herbert. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Herbert once more. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Here's a give to Herbert. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The commander's bringing out the nickel package on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. 
And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Two yards on the pickup there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there. Kind of played into their hands. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Washington offense will be backed up to start this drive as they've got it first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Here's a second and eight. Operating from the gun, Daniels. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets his football out shy of the 30 to the 29. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Straight ahead, Gibson. A little juke. And this is going to be a commander's first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Here's second and 10. To throw again, Daniels. Short throw here to the tight end, Bates. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 37. A gain there of 21 yards. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 37-yard line. A handoff for Gibson. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Here's a second and five. Gibson again. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Short throw here to the tight end, Bates. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Well, they'll say no to the 46-yard field goal try. They're going to go for it. Looking to throw. Daniels. That is caught. And this is going to wind up working out just fine as he'll have a Washington first down and an exhale there as they convert on fourth. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. So after the fourth down conversion, now first and ten inside the 25. 
Back to throw. Daniels. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. A great play there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And Washington has taken the lead. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and that makes the score 14-7. to Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Williams throwing to start the drive. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Now a second and 10. Throwing again, Williams. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but it left him no room to run as he goes straight out of bounds. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else, and now it's third and ten. Love the effort. Love the dramatics. Getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there, almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no gain, though? I was going to say, it's so pretty, <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Williams now on first and 10. That is caught by Herbert. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now Williams to throw on second down. This is caught inside the 15. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. That one goes for 36 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll look to throw again. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. A 
A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Foreman will take it in. Touchdown, Bears. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Now the point after try for Santos. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The commanders back out late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Daniels slings this deep from McLaurin. And that's caught inside the 30. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Throwing on first down. Daniels throwing it Terry McLaurin's way again, and he's got it. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now a second and six. Looking to throw. Daniels. A quick throw there is incomplete. Curtis Samuel, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. That he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. This a 33-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. 
And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll head. So I'm waltzing down Main Street, got an umbrella, just a torrential downpour, and I look over, and this guy, stone face, wearing a poncho that says, don't rain on my parade, and he is just angry. And uh, we gotta go. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the rest later. Here we go, third quarter. Field goal, the difference. 17 14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. To return is Scott. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35 yard line. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football. And now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and you know, we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 54 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. On first down, right back to Herbert. And down to the 36-yard line here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now second and three. Herbert now on the option, and this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Third down and one. They'll run with Herbert. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 14 yards in a Chicago first down. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. On first and 10, Williams looking for the out route, and he's got more. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. Back to throw. Williams and this will be well too low for him to bring in it's incomplete maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there he just didn't look comfortable on that throw no he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery 
and I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Here's Williams on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Bears! D.J. Moore with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Santos with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. First possession of the second half now for Washington. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. And a great job there to read that one defensively. They strung him out would not allow him to cut up field. And a lot of times these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. This second and four. Operating from the gun, Daniels. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Gibson here running out of the gun. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 67 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school. And one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. No gain on the play there. Second down. You don't see that a ton, do you? A cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now left side on the swing pass. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Back to Gibson, and another catch for him. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. So he stopped for no gain. And it'll be fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? 
especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. There's D.J. Moore as he and the rest of the offense head back out there. He's been his typical solid and reliable self, hasn't he, Charles? When you have that go-to receiver that you can count on in the situation where you absolutely have to have him, it, there's nothing better for anybody who's throwing the football. But the best part is the payoff. Two touchdowns already. That's the bottom line when you throw the ball to a guy. Absolutely. Not over 100 yards right now, but he does have the two touchdown catches. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. Call that a very strong gain of 24. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. And he's going to try and do this himself. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. This a second and seven from the 37. Looking to throw. Williams over the middle, and that's caught by Komet. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 41-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Read option. Here's Herbert. And powering through at the 35. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Williams looking to throw on second down. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and 10, it's Herbert. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, and he's got a first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this one. He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do? But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. We'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. A toss left side for Herbert. Oh, what a move. 94 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. 
Mercedes Lewis there to make the grab. And the Bears will add to their fourth quarter lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. After the touchdown, here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And the Washington offense going back to work. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. First down, Daniels. He'll dump that off to Gibson, complete. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Looking to throw on second down, Daniels. A good decision in the end to pull it and run. Get some nine yards and a first. Brandon, you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves, but I have to admit it. I liked what I just saw there. That rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit. Now, you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long, but he picked up the first down, kept fighting for yards, and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving. Throwing on first down, Daniels. Going right side here, and that's complete. And that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. To throw on second down, Daniels. Complete, it's Dodson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 37. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. On first and 10, Daniels. That's out to the flat for Gibson. Second down, eight yards to go. Back to throw, Daniels. Looking for Dotson, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. Jahan Dotson. 
35 yards. And the Commanders have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You, you establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game. You're in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the chess match really ramps up, doesn't it? Because in these situations, what do you do? Do you run the ball and kill the clock here? Or do you try and bury them with another score? And how about defensively? Do you use your timeouts at early's opportunity? Or wait till you hit the two-minute warning? So there's a lot going into this one. Let's see how each side goes about their strategy. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Herbert powering up the middle. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The commander is going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here now, third and a yard. They'll go again with Herbert. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Now Washington, down by five, just over a minute, 40 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. to throw gets this to Gibson and he's corralled at the 40 but not before picking up eight I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there didn't it did their job forced the punt now nice start to the drive offense has to do their part yeah they certainly do but what a great start for them and they gotta go thank the guys on D they come up now on second and two back to throw Finding Samuel. No time match. You got to go quick here. Let's go, man. 
final minute. No timeouts at their disposal. Here's first and ten. They'll look to throw. And incomplete. A drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. This definitely four-down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears will get the football back. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level from both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did. And just keeping it clean in a game like this with all these points, you don't see that very often, even at the highest level. Job well done by both sides. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.